Hi there, and welcome to Lecture 1 of ENG 1100, Workshop in Essay Writing. Today, I'm basically going to be going through the course outline with you, and uh, but I would ask you that you have your course outline out in front of you, have, uh, printed or whatever, but have access to it, because I'm going to ask, I'm going to be asking you to make some notes as we go through the outline today, okay? And that will be true of every lecture. Always have the course lecture in front of you. Uh, again, maybe you'll want to do it on a separate computer, but I would suggest actually having a, a printout because you're going to be, you're want, you'll want to be making copious notes that are not included in, in, in the notes themselves. You'll see what I mean as we start going through it. As a matter of fact, you'll see it today in about five, ten minutes. All right. So let's start with obviously the, the nuts and bolts of the course. The course, uh, as you can tell, maybe I should mention one thing about the course outline to begin with. It, it looks a bit odd. Uh, you'll notice I have the number one and then the number two. That's really only so that you can follow along. Normally, if we were in class, the, the outline wouldn't look like that, but no big deal, right? So anyway, so as I said, workshop and essay writing. And I should tell you that um, there's been a few changes that were implemented by the department um, in relation to this course. So if you know some students who are friends of yours who've also taken workshop and essay writing in the past, this is going to look quite a bit different, you'll see, okay? Remember, these are not my policies, although I do like the way that the, uh, the department has changed the, the entire course, um, but, but don't email me saying, well, I don't like the way this is set up or whatever. This is something, as I said, that was laid down by the department, okay? Um, but anyway, so the course, as you can see there, is asynchronous. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, it simply means that rather than you having to sit in front of a, you know, a, a, a computer at a certain time, I'll be sending you the lectures, the notes, everything you need prior to the, the, the date that we, we would usually hold class. All right. So basically, you'll be getting everything in advance, in advance. Usually what I do is I'll send it out probably on the weekend before, um, before the week of class. So that way you have time to go over the notes, to watch the lectures. You'll have plenty of time. Right. So don't worry about that, but that's all asynchronous means. It simply means that I won't be doing it in a very specific time manner. Okay. Now, uh, and you see there the, the day of the week for, the, and the, the only reason why I included the day of the week there is simply for the purposes of due dates. You'll see that again in about five or 10 minutes when we start to get into the, uh, the week by week breakdown. Okay. So um, very important what I'm about to say next, right? <clears throat> Make a note of this, please. When you signed up for this course, you also signed up for something called a DGD, discussion group. And uh, so you might be in discussion one, group one or group two. Please don't email me asking which group you were in, okay? I will send you an email in the first week, first week of class, uh, and I'll let you know which group you are in. And I'll also then tell you where all of your assignments should be sent. So you'll, on the outline, you see that you have my uh, uh, email address, and you also have the TA's email address. And so, as I said, I'll make it very clear where you should be sending your assignments in the first week, around the first week of class. Okay, uh, people, some people will add or drop the course or whatever, so there, there might be late latecomers. So I like to wait maybe until like the end of the first week, so that things have settled down in terms of registration. Okay, so as I said, don't worry about that. Don't be sending email asking or worrying or panicking. I'll take care of stuff like that for you. As a matter of fact. That's something maybe I want to talk about right now. Because we've been doing online courses for over a year, and I, I've been doing them for many, many years, at, okay, like many years, uh, students, when it's an online course, they tend to get ahead of themselves. Try not to do that, all right? Try not to get ahead of yourself, like asking questions for week four when we're only in week two. Basically, the way the course will, will, will run, run, run itself, okay, I was going to say basically the way the course is going to run its course, okay, that would have been... <laughs> the best way of saying that, okay, or expressing that. But basically, you'll see that the course is laid out as a process. We'll be starting with smaller things, like we won't be writing essays right away, okay? As a matter of fact, well, this might surprise you, we won't be writing a full essay until the end of the term, until the end of the course. Uh, and again, this is something new, again, uh, implemented by the department, but I like, I like the way that they've laid this out. You'll see, you'll see it as we get through today, all right? So my point was, Please don't be sending email about week six when we're only in week two or whatever. All right. Things will make sense as we go along. Okay. All right. 
So you have my office hours there. Well, <laughs> and it says TBD, obviously to be determined, but it's kind of irrelevant um, because in a sense, we will not really be having DGDs as such. Like obviously we can't meet in class. So again, the depending upon which group you're in, the either myself or the TA will send you, right, basically a, 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 a time period where it will be convenient for us to answer questions through email, through a Zoom chat, whatever, whatever. And again, that's just the way it is. The reason why I'm going to set it up that way, maybe I should be a bit clearer on that. I hate having group discussions with 35 people sitting on a screen. It it just doesn't work. I know some people love doing that, but I don't. It, it, I, I just find that there might be one or two individuals who, who speak a lot and everybody else just kind of sits there looking around wondering what to do with themselves, like the Brady Bunch, okay? If you've ever seen the Brady Bunch at the beginning, right? So anyway, um, so instead, we'll lay out a time for you where, and, and again, that doesn't mean that you, you can't email outside of that time, but we'll let you know, look, we're available now, like at that time frame, if you need a, a question answered quickly. Now, I would also ask, though, because this course is being offered online, some of you may be in different time zones. And I'll get into that more later on as well. But please don't send, e try and think of, you know, Eastern time and try not to email like after 6 p.m. Or, or on weekends, okay? O only because I find that when we're teaching an online course, it's as if we're, we're, we're on call 24 seven. So I'd like a bit of, I hate this word, you know, it's a word that we're using a lot now, normalcy in my life. So um, if you could try and think about that, okay? I, I, every once in a while, I'll get an email at 11.30 and I, it tends to, I, I tend to want to get back to people right away, but <laughs> that kind of weighs on me when it is that late at night, okay? So anyway, I would just, that's just asking a favor. Now, uh, my office is in Hamlin Hall, 315. So if ever we do return to campus or what have you, right? If you ever want to pop by and say hi, that's that's usually where I am. Now, obviously, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the course is online. I think, well, you know that by now because I'm sending this to you. And so next point, notice I have this bolded, okay? Again, like, like pause the video. If you don't have your outline in front of you, I will not answer questions that I've already gone through right now, okay? I, again, I want to save as many emails as I can because email can take forever, right? I'm, I'm trying to give you, like, to, to get a proper answer to something. That can, we can go back and forth and back and forth. That's especially true of assignments. So instead, please follow along, make notes, and I'll try and make this as clear as possible for you. I know I said that already, but that's the one thing. The administration of the course, I find email, et cetera, takes up far more time than the actual you know, giving lectures and, and marking uh, assignments, the administration is, is far more time consuming. So really, I would ask you to try and make copious notes right from the information that I give you. I, I know I'm going on about that, but it is it does save a lot of time. So next point, even though there are files on Brightspace for you right now, I've already set up a few for you, like, for instance, you know, the course outline and all that kind of stuff in case, you know, something goes missing. And I've got um, things like a sample page, what, what, a, what a, an, uh, an APA paper looks like, right? American Psychological Association. Some papers, maybe I'll say that a bit differently. Some papers, um, APA and then what's called MLA, Modern Language Association, APA has a title page. Uh, that's in all in explaining your outline, whereas MLA doesn't have a title page as such. If you don't understand what I mean by that, go to Brightspace, take a look where it says MLA sample first page, APA sample for. So I've got stuff like that already at Brightspace for you. However, I will not be putting assignments on Brightspace. I will not be. Um, I will not be sending you through like like notes and lectures and all that through Brightspace. I will be sending them directly to your U Ottawa account, okay? And it, it's a very simple process at my end, but I just find it's a it's a much smoother way of doing things, so that you don't get timed out when it comes to certain assignments and all of that. So again, that's why it's bolded there. All right, I'll be basically I'll send you a video each week, okay? Again, I might even send two a week, like like I might get ahead, okay? And then, um, like, depending upon, you know, other things going on in my life, right? Uh, and then, but I'll send you the notes as well. So literally, you'll have the video, but then you'll also have the notes. 
So you can follow along, but as I said, but you'll want to be making notes for yourself because you might have a question, like you might want to put a question mark somewhere. Maybe you'll want to go back and watch something again. So okay, not a bad idea to have both with you. I'll take care of all of that. And one question I noticed, uh, I kept getting one student, this was just in the, in, in the previous term, who kept saying, uh, for some reason, I haven't received the notes yet. And I'm just wondering why I'm not getting them. And I, I, I would send back an answer two or three times, I haven't sent them yet. <laughs> so in other words, if you're watching this now, that means you're in the class, You like everything is set to go. So you will get them, right? But maybe I don't feel like sending them out on a Saturday night, <laughs> okay? So but I'm, not, I'm not joking though. One person, he kept doing this over and over again. How come I don't have the notes? Am I not in the class anymore? Like, relax, all right? I was gonna make an 80s joke there. Frankie say relax. None of you will get that. That Well, one or two of you may, anyway. Okay, and so as I said, it's all bolded right there, right? You know, add notes as you go along, right? Or maybe, like I said, question mark or whatever, you might wanna go back. Okay, number two, now we're at to number two, okay? I should tell you this lecture, probably 40 minutes. Most of the lectures, were, they'll be around 50 minutes, except when we have, say, a, an article that I might be going through with you, they take a bit longer. And uh, I'll probably maybe stop the video after the lecture component. But remember, you can uh, and then go back to the second part. But you can always pause, right? So that's another benefit about doing it online. So um, there was another reason why I was saying that. There's one lecture, I can't remember which one it is, that goes about an hour and 10, okay? But usually they're about 50 minutes long, okay? All right. So suggested texts. Notice the word suggested texts. You do not, I repeat, do not have to purchase anything for this course. You've spent enough already just enrolling, right? I'll, I'll send you everything you need. The reason why I have these two things here, and now is a good time to make a note or two. I'm basically including the two books that I've used in the past. I find them helpful for the writing process, um, especially the first one, the uh, Canadian Practical Stylist. And so obviously from the title, style, usage, you know, expression, things like that. And we'll be getting into all of that in by week three, okay? I'll, I'll be actually getting into grammar and everything else in week three. Don't worry about that. It sounds tedious. It's not. I'll, I'll show you some fun stuff with grammar. And I'll also, I won't just give you rules of grammar. I'll, I'll actually explain why these things work the way they do. I find that's far more helpful than simply giving you some rules. So that's where I'll be taking a lot of that kind of information. and. Then we have another one called They Say, I Say. That's a more recent uh, book. It came out about four years ago, 2017. There you go. And so let me break that down for you. I want, later on, you're gonna have to do a midterm. You're gonna be expected to, you're gonna be expected to document or, or cite, C-I-T-E, make a citation, an in-text citation of an article that I'm gonna send. I'm gonna give you your first hint of the course right now. Again, don't email me about this. We'll get to it. I'll get to it next lecture, as a matter of fact. I'll start talking more about that, okay? But let me give you a little hint right now. Take a look at Baker, I'm on the first line, Baker, Sharon, and Lawrence, okay? And uh, uh, Lawrence Bigamash. And then notice it says EDS. So for those of you who aren't familiar with, with this type of style, well, that means that they are editors. Okay, so if you were to quote from a book like that, it's very different, and I'm not going to do it today, but it would be very different from simply quoting from a book that only had an author. Authors are very straightforward. When you have editors, that usually means that, they, that there's a whole lot of different maybe essays or whatever, a whole like a different, uh, uh, just different components when it comes to the collection that they have edited, right? Think of any anthology or what have you. So you've got lots of different authors within the anthology, but you might have one person who's the editor, the person who put it all together. When you're quoting, that gets really complicated. And again, I'll get into that. I don't want to do that today. But when you're quoting from an author, take a look now at the second one, Graf and Birkenstein. When you're quoting from an author, it's much easier. So I'm going to give you a hint right now. Almost everything I'm gonna give you, okay, will come from they say, I say. 
make a note. Do not email me again. You're at university now. You have to kind of figure some of these things out. So what I would write there, okay, in your note, right, right beside that, I would say authors. They are the authors. Whereas in the first one, they are the editors. Totally different. Again, like I said, in lecture two, I'll get into all of that, right? I'll try not to make it too complicated because it can get really complicated, but I'll try and keep it as simplistic as I can for now, all right? So as I said, next lecture, we'll get into it. Now, the objectives of the course, well, very straightforward. The course is designed to give you strategies to read and summarize academic papers. That's really the first half of the course. You're going to be reading articles, summarizing, looking for thesis statements and things like that, but I'll be helping you. Like, as I said, in lecture two, we will get into our first, well, again, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself because I've got that all in the course outline, but we'll start with reading and summarizing. Then we will slowly move towards the writing process. You'll Well, obviously you'll be doing some writing in the first half of the course, but we, we won't even be worried about introductions and conclusions, really, until the second half of the course. Again, you'll see in about, again, I keep saying in about 10, 15 minutes, but that is the way it'll un unfold, all right? And so summarizing, reading and summarizing in the first part, and then writing, more writing in the second part, okay? All right, so I'm on page two now. I'm going to move to page two. And yeah, in a moment, you'll, you'll see exactly how the course is going to unfold. So the course is divided into two, par two parts. And the first is reading, okay, and then the second is more writing, as I said, okay? And then each lecture will con consist of two, two components as well, the video and the notes. Boom. That's really the course, okay? So I don't know if I really have to say anything more about that. Maybe I should just mention one thing at the very end of uh, methodology. It says some materials will be also posted at Brightspace. All I mean by that is what I just mentioned earlier, right? Then I'll, I have some files on there already for you. But for the most part, I'll be sending you everything for the most part, okay? Except I won't be sending you the sample pages, right? That, that's something you need to figure out. Some of you won't need one of them, okay? Some of you, you should, and you should figure this out, by the way, what is your discipline? If your discipline is the, the social sciences or the sciences, chances are you'll be using what we call APA. If you're more into the arts, then you'll be using MLA. And again, that's not a hard and fast rule, but you should find out what, what your discipline uses, all right? Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm aware of all these things. Um, political science and history, I believe, are still using Chicago. And so if, if you're in political science or history and, you, and that's what they need, uh, that's what they ask for, then Chicago is fine, okay? But as I said, you really should find out for your discipline, all right? Okay. Now, let's go into number four, then the grading assignment. Okay, the grading system. And so here is what I would call your portfolio. There'll be a quiz component, grammar. So make an, again, make a note of this. This is another question I get all the time from one or two students, right? Well, how is the, what, what is the grammar quiz all about? I will send, once, once we've done the grammar, I will send, um, I'll, I'll send you 10 sentences and you'll simply have to fix them, all right? And each of the quizzes is worth 5%. So you get like a half point for each sentence, right? And if you got all 10 correctly, you'd get five out of five. There are two quizzes, okay, which adds up to 10%. So the first quiz won't be too difficult because it'll really just be, we'll be doing stuff like uh, commas, the possessive case, things like that, basic stuff, basic stuff. But then on the final quiz, I'll, they'll be at, at weeks nine and 10, I believe, eight or nine or nine or 10, We'll get into far more sophisticated stuff, usage, subject verb agreement, like more complicated subject verb agreement. But again, don't worry, I'll, I'll get you there. I'll get you there, okay? And so there's that part. Then the first major assignment will be an article summary. And we'll have kind of like a trial run through in lecture two. And then um, you'll be asked to do an article summary, but I'll, I'll give you, you know, I'll give you everything we're looking for, obviously. Okay, so don't panic about that. Then we'll have a midterm. And this is the first time we've ever had a midterm that I can remember for 1100, right? So it'll be, uh, oh, and, and so the midterm is the one thing you'll have to really make a note of right now. The midterm will be a timed assignment, which means I will send it out at a certain time. You will only be given an hour and a half to send it back. Normally, you'll have much more time to do your assignments. But when it comes to the quiz component, I'm sorry, when it comes to the midterm, 
Again, this is departmental policy. It's going to be timed, right? You'll have, I'll send it, boom. You must send it back within time frame, okay? And um, I think I said an hour and a half. That, that may change, okay? Because I'm taping this lecture about three weeks before the course begins. And so um, that may change, but for now, go, just go by the hour and a half, but I may change it to two hours, okay? Again, don't take my word on that. We'll see, we'll see. Again, these are all departmental decisions and I'm doing this a bit too early probably. So anyway, you'll see. Then we will do an outline and that now we're into your final research paper. I'm gonna show you how to do a really good outline, not like you did in high school, all right? M much different. And um, then we'll have a workshop activity, which and this is something that I, I did. I must admit, I'm, I'm doing this on my own. When we were told to do a workshop component, okay, a workshop activity, one of the suggestions was participation. No way will I ever do a particip give a particip sorry, participation grade in a university course. No way. Okay, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. Just because you might be an introvert doesn't mean that you should get a low grade. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to do your introductory paragraph for your final paper. Now, notice, I'm going to ask you to do an outline first, and that outline will consist of the body of your essay, not the intro, not the conclusion. When we get to structure, I've got a whole thing I've created for you, not from any book. I, I created it on my own, and it's 15 steps to writing an essay. 15 steps to writing a really good essay. The introduction is step 12. Why that? That doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. You'll see. What we want to do is figure out how to put a paper together properly. You can't write your introduction. This is something I used to do in high school and got very frustrated with writing. I would create an introduction first, and then I'd start to write. Well, that, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. First, you have to do quite a bit of work, and then the introduction will kind of create itself, as you'll see. All right. Again, right. Take take my word for it. Trust me. I'm a doctor. OK, <laughs> I'm not. I just play one on TV anyway. OK, and then finally. And so so, as I said, the workshop activity will be a paragraph, okay? but it'll be your introduction to the final research paper. You've already done the body because you did your outline. Now, look, now we put the entire. Where'd you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? Oh, there you are. Now, think about that. You've, all, you've almost done the entire structure of your paper. Now all you have to do is write your conclusion. Now, obviously, I know there's more to it than that, but doesn't that sound almost backwards? And I actually published a paper a long time ago. I don't even know if I can find it anymore, but the title was, Why is English Taught Backwards? Well, in fact, the backward way that we're going to do it is the proper way, not the other way around where you start with an introduction and then you go from there. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. And so. Even when you hand in your outline, it'll it'll actually instead of saying thesis like like give me a thesis, it'll say tentative thesis, and you may not even know what your tentative thesis is, and that's fine. Okay, so again, you should be making notes right now. These are the kind of questions that, that will come up, but I'm I'm giving you the answers right now. Okay, so finally, then yeah, we'll have our take home exam uh, examination, and that will literally be an essay. So isn't that interesting? You're going to write one full essay for this entire course. But believe me, the process of getting there will make a great deal of sense, all right? You'll, because more, you'll be more or less working on your essay in the entire second half of the course, right? An outline, then your introduction, then finally the paper. And when we get you know further on in the course, I believe around lecture seven, that's where I'll start talking about the art of argumentation. Right? So we've got other stuff to do before that, but we'll get there. We'll get there. And so this in, 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 in section number five there, I'm not going to go through all of that with you. You, you can read that if you want, okay? Um, but one thing, you're not allowed to rewrite your assignments. Like once you hand in an assignment, let's just say you don't do all that great on it, we're not allowed to, uh, we're not allowed to let you rewrite it. And again, that is a faculty of arts. That's a faculty uh, rule, not a departmental one. So that's something I can't change. So again, make a note of that. And then obviously... You want to make sure you have all of your assignments completed, okay, to earn a credit for the course. I don't, I don't think I need to explain that, right? And then uh, let's see. Okay. Um, make sure, please, 
make sure you always send your assignments as Word attachments. Don't, do not send PDFs because PDFs are a pain to actually put comments on, all right? So uh, if, if, if all you can send is a PDF, like send me a quick email, and maybe we can work something out, but I would prefer, I would prefer if you simply sent it as a Word attachment, okay? And then again, it says send as a word attachment to your group instructor. Remember what I talked about earlier? I'll send you an email in the first week telling you who your group instructor is. That simply means, uh, like, do you send them to the TA? Do you send them somewhere else? That's all, that's all that means. And then extensions. Well, obviously, right now, because of the pandemic and everything, I realize stuff may come up, right? But for the most part, okay, you are not allowed an extension without uh, some kind of documented, uh, documented substantiation. Okay. All right. Now we're already 25 minutes into it. Wow. This might take a tiny bit longer than I thought. Anyway, um, keep a portfolio of all portfolio of all your work. All I mean by that is let's just say at the end of the term, you, um, I'm, I'm missing a grade. I'm missing a grade for your outline, but you handed it in, right? So I'll be able then to email you saying, well, for some reason, I don't have a, a grade for you and all you have to do is send it to me. Boom. So, and I'm not saying you have to actually put it in a file or anything like that, right? But anytime you get a, an assignment back, hang on to it until you have your final grade. Just in case, it, it's amazing. Throughout the last year, papers, like people will send stuff to certain email addresses thinking that they've sent them to me and I don't receive them. It could be something as simple as my last name, which is kind of an odd Gaelic name, all right? Though, like you probably never heard of that. There's the, yeah, I can't even think of another person who you might have heard of with the last name Gilday, all right? So um, if, let's just say you got the E and the A wrong, sometimes people will add a U to my name and then I don't get it. So hang on to stuff just in case, just in case, all right? All right, on the subject of documentation then, so now we're on page three, by the way, okay? I'm not gonna go through everything with you this way, but I just wanna make sure we have the nuts and bolts. So APA or MLA style is mandatory. And again, I'll show you all that, right? There is something I'm gonna show you in a sec though when it comes to that. And like I said, if you need to do Chicago, that's fine, that's fine. Just be consistent. That's really the key, okay? Now, please make a note here. You will probably have questions on documentation. Not that I don't cover. Not just for this course, but for your university career. The best site to go to. I'm not kidding. Bookmark it. Make it a favorite right now. Okay. Pause the lecture. Go to any search engine and type in OWL. Okay. O W L. Woo, woo, all right. O W L at Purdue. Purdue. Okay. Is a university in the United States. It's in Indiana, and um, it is that website is is probably the best in the world. I'm not, and I'm not exaggerating. That's the one that most scholars will use. So let's just say you just had an odd question about documentation, all right, or style or whatever. Chances are you'll find it at OWL. The only problem with OWL is that it, it is so extensive that it can be a bit daunting. Right? Like, oh my God, where do I, where do I? So they do have search engines though, where you can type in, you know, sample page for this or that, or they have sample essays as a matter of fact, not really for what we're doing, okay? Uh, but I'll be honest with you, I, I stole a couple of things from OWL for the, the course itself, right? Actually, did I this year? No, I guess I didn't, but I have in the past. Like they, Oh, actually, no, the sample page. The sample pages, they came straight from OWL. So, um, yeah, so make sure you bookmark that OWL Purdue, okay? Uh, and, uh, and hang on to it for the rest of your university career. It will come up over and over again, I guarantee you, all right? All right. Academic dishonesty. Now, we won't talk too much about that today, but um, I want to be really careful with the way I say what I'm about to say next. If you're going to cheat, you better be really good at it. <laughs> it is so easy to catch it. It is so easy to catch plagiarism nowadays. It, it's not funny. I caught two last term. All right. <laughs> I can't tell you how easy it is. There's, there's just certain certain search engines you just go to, type in a sentence, and boom, there it is, right? I was about to say, boom goes the dynamite. That's that's when something is really obvious, right? And boom goes the dynamite. But anyway, so academic dishonesty. Now, you and I are going to have fights throughout the term on the difference between paraphrasing, right? Okay, paraphrasing, 
and actually quoting. We'll get to it. Week two, lecture two, we'll get to it. But do me a favor. Try and break out of the habit. I know some of you were taught this in high school, okay, or college or wherever, maybe even university. Don't write a full paragraph and then just have a name at the end of the paragraph. For goodness sakes, don't do that. Don't have a name at the end of every sentence, because if you do that on your final paper, I'm going to write which words are yours. So when you can, quote, especially when we're talking about statistics or something like that. Like, again, like, like you don't have to email me saying, well, what if I said the sky is blue, right? I, okay, don't email me with stuff like that, right? Am I supposed to document that? But when you have statistics, especially, right? If you say 72%, well, that came from somewhere. It didn't come out of your, you know what, all right? So there's a balance. And again, I'm going to talk about that next week. And I'll show you, I'll show you. There are times where you have to paraphrase. I know if you're in the social sciences and a case study. Correct. I know. I know. I've been, I've been, I'm, I'm 105 years old. I've been through all of that. Okay. So okay, don't email me saying I have a particular thing where, you know, it's never happened to anyone before. Yes, it has. And so we'll talk about it next week. Okay. Or next, next lecture, I should say. All right. Okay. Um, but you've got it right there. Plagiarism, like taking a, an author's words or ideas, okay, without proper reference. But again, that doesn't mean just putting the name at the end of a paragraph. So again, there's a balance. You should have quotation marks in your paper, all right, uh, and, and in your in your midterm. But again, I'm going to show you that that's exactly what we're going to talk about next week. So let's move on from that, okay? All right. Internet sources. Uh, that's an interesting one because by the time we get to your final research paper, you won't you won't need internet sources as we know them. Do you know what I mean? Like Joe's website or whatever. I'll show you that everything you're going to need, you'll be able to find in the university databases, all right? Uh, Google Scholar, not bad, not a bad place to start. But if you do find something in Google Scholar, just for example, to see if it's in our university database. Chances are it is. If it's an, if it's an, an, an actual peer-reviewed journal, I shouldn't have said that. Don't email me again about that. Uh, we'll get to it. But you should not be using like URLs. You, you know how your paper will look. It looks like crap when when you've got a paragraph and, and the URLs are like three lines long. And OK, that's what we're going to want to avoid. We'll, 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 I'll show you how to get rid of all that kind of stuff. All right. And then how to document it properly with what we call a work cited at the end or references. Right. Instead of a bibliography. We'll get to all of that. I mean, we've, we've got a whole term. Right. So lots to do. And then, um, yeah, so so basically, I'm, I'm, I'm more or less just saying what, what's already in the course outline. So uh, finally, then, OK, so now I'm going to maybe go through a few things with you on the next page. There it is. I'll post the notes and lectures online. So remember, directly to your UAuto account. So I think I'm just wrapping up there. I want to remind you that's how it's going to work. OK, so you can expect. Uh, I, I believe almost every week, there might be one or two at the end where I don't send out any note. Like, I'm trying to remember. Week 12, for some reason, may be a bit different from what I remember. But for the most part, as I said, you'll get the notes and you'll get the, the, the video. OK. All right. Just as today. Right. You've got your video that you're watching now. You've got the course outline. And that's the only notes you needed for today. Those, Sorry. Those are the only notes you needed for today. It's just the course outline. I'll have a few things to say at the end, but no. So now let's go to page four. Now we're looking at the breakdown. OK, so class by class. OK, because, again, I might send out things early or whatever. I usually do. So class by class, when you have an assignment due, notice we're in lecture one now, OK, where it says all times indicated are Eastern time zone. All right. So don't be playing around with me when it comes to, well, I live in Vancouver and therefore I thought you can figure that out. All right. So all time zones uh, are all assignments uh, should indicated are Eastern time zone. And um, I've gotten I've, I've given you like notice in the second week. OK, there's an article. I'll send you the article. Don't worry. You'll you'll get it. So going back to the books, then you don't need to buy the books. OK. Uh, there, there are hundreds of books like that out there, style guides and things like that. Most will be fine. Most will be fine. The only thing, the only thing that's changed over the years is documenting uh, electronic citations, right? Journals online that you found in the library, whatever. But again, I'm going to show you all that. So don't worry. Don't worry. Um, and so the first article we have there is Don't Blame the Eater. Then um, 
you'll see. And so next lecture, we'll be doing summaries, you know, in class, in, sorry, in text citations. And then we'll be doing a, a crash course in grammar and style. So that'll just be for your own writing, because that's that's partly what you'll be graded on in your early assignments with the summaries. We'll still be expecting you to be writing proper sentences, right? Proper expression. Uh, but again, that's my job to show you that. So that's what we'll be doing next week. Plus the in-text citations we were talking about before, quoting, paraphrasing, all that. So that's the next lecture. And then we'll do uh, a summary discussion, and that's optional, meaning if you have questions on, you know, your summary that you're, you know, or, or if you didn't quite get something that was happening in the lecture, then remember that time frame, you send an email, and we'll get back to you. All right. Then you have the date there for your summary. Okay. And in lecture four, I'll start talking about the subject and the thesis. What's the difference between the two? But the nice thing is you won't need to worry about that for your first summary. Because remember, we when, when you do your first summary, you won't necessarily need an introduction. Remember, I already said that, right? We'll worry more about, again, you'll see, you'll see. So you've got your dates there and the times and what the, you know, what the assignment is worth. It's all there for you. And what I've done also is whenever there's something due, for instance, notice the grammar quiz, we'll have, we'll have our first grammar quiz. Notice anything like that, I bold. I, I like to bold it with the date just to remind you. But I'm pretty good with stuff like that. Normally, I prob I'll probably send you a quick email, you know, a couple of days before saying, don't don't forget, I mean, we've got a grammar quiz coming up. Okay. <laughs> Why do my eyes go like that all of a sudden? I have no idea. Anyway. All right. I just want some juice here. Hang on. Hmm. All right. So um, where was I? So, yeah. So, so if you just take a look quickly, notice there, by the way. Uh, lecture four on the lecture side, structure, 15 steps. So I'll be going through all that kind of stuff with you, showing how a paper is put together, right? More than more, uh, more than just saying, go write a paper, all right? And then I'll send you, the uh, the virtual library tour, by the way, is already on Brightspace. I'll, 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 I'll end up sending it again only to remind myself, but it's already there. So uh, normally we would have a li librarian come into the class and, and do the tour, but I've given you her literally her her uh, her her lecture. Okay, so if you go look at that, you'll see you'll see. Um, all right, so I don't know how much more I have to do on that, except for one thing. Except for one thing, we do like I said, we have a midterm, and that midterm it is specified right there the day and the time. I'm sorry, this is not a game. This is not one of my policies. In the new revised version of 1100, it is specified. Okay, it is stipulated there must be a timed midterm. So, right, like I said, again, um, don't email me. Like, again, if you're in a different time zone or whatever, right, I, it's not my rule. It is not my rule. It is a departmental rule. And I think that's really the only other thing that I need to explain with that whole week by week breakdown. All right. Everything else I think is pretty self explanatory. Maybe I'll mention one last thing. If you'll notice in lecture seven, there is an article called The Changing Face of Literacy. It's not an academic article and it doesn't come from They Say, I Say. All right, maybe I should show you here. Here is They Say, I Say. If you ever see it online, okay? I don't know if you can see that well or not. Ugh, I don't know how to do that. Anyway, there's a couple of editions. And um, basically, in the, the Changing Face of Literacy, that's an article I found somewhere else. And as I said, it's not really academic, but it really works well to explain structure. So, and again, I'll do the work, I'll do the work. You really wanna start figuring out how to put a paper together. And, and so that's really what this course is all about. How, how, how other papers are put together, first half of the course, excuse me, and then how you put a paper together, okay? Nuts and bolts, body, intro, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So everything we do then, will lead up to the take home exam, and that will be during the exam period. Chances are it'll be the first or second day of the exam period. So if you just wanna make a note right now, not chances are, it will be. It'll be the first or second day of the exam period. Again, I, I haven't made a decision on that yet, only because I'm doing this so early that the, I don't even know if the exam period has been posted yet, probably not. The, the, don't, again, don't worry, I'll, I'll make sure you all know what we're, we're doing, but it'll be early. It'll be early in the exam period. So if you do happen to see online that the exam period is already posted, 
you can pencil in, it'll be one, one of the earliest days, like the first or second day, all right? And then obviously, I'll, 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 I'll give you some time to, to you know, get that done. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, no, let me take that back. The paper will actually be due in the first or second day of the exam period. But because we're building up and building up and building up, like I said, you'll be working on that, you know, like over and over again, you'll be ready. You'll be ready. You'll see. Okay, finally. Okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm almost, I just want to get to the assignments themselves. Okay, so there's the minimum requirements at the top of page five for your essay, for your final research take-home essay. And like I already said in, earlier, uh, APA, MLA, I've given you the breakdown there for all of those things. But again, take a look at the sample pages. Okay, choose which one you're going to use. And there you go. Make sure that the font is Times New Roman 12. Okay, again, I'm kind of a stickler on that. Uh, last term, I had one student, the student, excuse me, simply kept handing in things that were like in a font of nine. And like, I couldn't read it. Like, like again, I'm 105 years old, right? My, my eyes are going. So, and I couldn't read it. I simply couldn't read it. So I would send it back and then the student would send it back again, same thing. <laughs> How do you think that worked out? <laughs> anyway, so take a look at all of that there. Uh, obviously, the, it's the usable stuff, right? Your paper should be double spaced, one side of the page only. Um, yeah, style appropriate to an academic paper. We're going to do all that. Like if you're looking at that now thinking, well, what does that mean? Don't worry. We'll, we'll get to it. As a matter of fact, next, next class, we'll get to that. Okay, so finally then. Sorry, I shouldn't be saying finally. That's a terrible thing to be saying because now you think that the lecture is almost over. Although we're already 40 minutes in, I didn't think it would take this long. So we've got our first assignment, okay, an article summary. So basically, I'll send you an article. Let's just quickly look down at the, uh, the assignment itself at the bottom of page five. So about 500 words, right? Two pages, tops, tops. You know, if it's page and a half, fine, fine. Not a half a page, but page and a half to two pages. That should be fine for an article summary. And... By the time you get to that, I'll already have shown you, okay, again, next lecture, I'll have shown you everything I'm looking for, okay? And notice, you will not be expected to include an introduction or conclusion, okay? Okay, because we haven't dealt with that yet. But if you want to add one, fine, fine, okay? Yeah, there's a, a great chef you can find online. His name is Pierre Marco White, and he's the most laid back chef you're ever going to see. So, no matter what ingredients he's he's telling you to use, he'll say, oh, you, can use, you can use it or not, your choice. And so the comments at the end are great, where he tells you, okay, today I'm going to make a steak. You can use a steak or not, your choice. Those are the kind of comments you find at the end. But anyway, so it's your choice when you want an intro conclusion. But again, don't worry too much about that. We haven't really talked about those things. We won't have talked about those things by the time we get to that. Okay. And then we have the midterm. And again, I might change that. So like the, the time, I might change it to two hours again. So when you have, by the time you get the outline, it'll be very clear, is it one and a half or two? You'll see, you'll see, all right? As I said, I'm still working off a couple of things that I might change, but by the time you get the outline, the changes will have been made, all right? And I'll, I'll make sure it's bolded. And again, I'll probably send you a quick email saying, okay, I've made these changes here. Okay. And again, when it comes to the midterm, you're still not expected to write an entire essay. It'll be a summary as we will talk about. Then I'll ask you to do the outline. So I'm just repeating now what we already talked about, right? You'll do the outline. It'll be at one page. One page is all I want for the outline. But again, because I haven't really shown you yet how to do it, okay? Like, don't worry. But I do not want, I, I'm not expecting an outline like you might have done in high school, where you simply give a whole lot of quotes from a short story or, or whatever, and then, and then say, you know, well, what do you think? That is not how a really good outline works, okay? So, but again, I'll show you how to do all that. I, I find outlines are really helpful for the, the, the purposes of writing a paper. Hmm. All right. So then we'll have our workshop activity will be, it's the introduction of your essay. So notice, again, how everything unfolds. Then finally, the take-home exam. And that's you. That's the final paper. OK. And so the paper itself. Notice, let's jump to page seven now to the first bold. Right. OK. Four to five pages. Double spaced. Yeah, should be good enough. I find that 
students who end up handing in a seven or eight page paper when you've been asked to do four or five, they usually are very repetitive. They just keep saying the same thing over and over again. By the time we get to the end of the course, I'll, 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 I hope I will have shown you how to avoid that. All right. But again, but again, if your final paper is five and a half pages, that's fine. That's fine. All right. Your choice. <laughs> anyway, then I've got some suggest suggested topics. OK, so we are almost done now. I've got some suggested some suggested topics. I would strongly, strongly recommend you choose your own topic. The ones that I have here, they're fine, but they're awfully eh, they're they're just kind of general. All right. And so, yeah. Choose your own topic, come up with something on your own. Uh, and again, you will have done that by the time we get to the outline, right? So anyway, okay, so that's about it really. By the time we get to the, the final paper, you will have be, you'll be expected to include two sources, academic sources uh, that you will probably find in the university library. So no more websites or anything like that. But again, we've got a long way to go before we get to all of that. So you're probably, if this is your first course at university, you're probably thinking, well, I don't know how to do that. That's my job. That's what I'm getting paid for. All right. So you have the percentage scale, which, by the way, is different. If you happen to be taking this course and you attend a different university, Ottawa U's uh, grade, uh, grade scale or K is, is different than, well, for instance, it's different than Carleton's. If you happen to be in Ottawa and you took a course at Carleton, Ottawa U's is, is different. Uh, notice. Ottawa U does not have B minuses or C minuses, right? So again, just something different. If you end up getting a grade and you think, well, this doesn't match with what I thought my numerical grade was, that just make a note of that there, okay? Page eight. So that's the University of Ottawa, the percentage scale and the alpha grade. Then the very last thing I have in the course outline, basically many students, I've, I've heard this in the past, Many students feel that uh, English especially is a very subjective thing, right? If your teacher liked you in high school, then you did well in English. And if your teacher didn't like you, you didn't do well in it. None of that applies here. So what I've tried to do for your final paper, I've tried to give you, and even, even an indication for your outline and everything else, I've tried to give you a, 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 basically a breakdown. This is what a D paper constitutes. This is a C. This is a B. This is an A. If you read that, it becomes very clear that an A stands out. It, an A paper stands out. An A paper doesn't take very long to grade at all, right? Whereas a C or a D paper can take quite a bit. So I'm not going to bore you with that, but, but take a look at that, all right? Just, just to get a sense of what is expected. Because to get an A, I, I'm being serious now, to get an A in this course takes a bit of effort. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, it takes a lot of effort. So I'll be able to tell, I've done this so many times now, I've, I've done courses like this so many times, I can tell a paper that's been written the night before. But the good thing about the way we've now set this course up, you'll be forced to be working on your paper, right? Long before it's due. So that's basically how the course will run. Uh, and in, uh, like I said, in the next lecture then, I will be basically setting out everything you need for summarizing. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm probably going to, I've already set up the lecture, but there's a couple more things I want to work on. So I'll be sending that out probably in before the second week of the course. All right. Just so you have a bit of time to, to go over uh, the lecture and the notes. And now I'm starting to talk for no reason at all. So I get the feeling I think we're done for the day. It took 15 minutes. Wow. So uh, again, Try not to anticipate. That, that's really the, the final things I want to say. Try not to anticipate things going on in the course, all right? You, you have questions. You probably have questions right now. The questions will get answered as we go through. Then email etiquette, okay? Last couple of things. When you do send an email, if you're going to send an email, please do not send an email that's like three paragraphs long and then say, could you comment, okay? Or what do you think? But email takes forever, right? And so try to be concise, succinct, okay? Send short emails with, with, with very specific questions if you have a question. But don't just write something that goes on and on and on and on. I had two today. I had two today, as a matter of fact. Our exam is coming up for another course. I literally, half a page of questions. And then the student said, could you be, get back to me ASAP? Don't do stuff like that, all right? <laughs> okay? I wish, I wish I could be truly honest. 
what I'm thinking right now, just don't do it. Get, take my word for it. So email etiquette and then try, try to be considerate in terms of time. Uh, you know, what time of the day you're sending the email. I, I'm a late riser, I'll be honest with you. So not a bad idea. Okay. Um, well, actually, no, I, I, I think it's better. It's better if I just give you that time frame and that way then you know that I'll be getting back to you soon. I know some of you work as well. There might be, a, you know, when I said no exceptions about one or two things in the lecture, I know there might be a couple of things, okay, that maybe we can work around. But for the most part, as I said, these are not my policies. So uh, other than that, I am going on way too long. So um, I hope you enjoy the course. And um, yeah, watch the lectures or not. Your choice. Anyway, all right. I'll, I'll be talking to you guys soon. Okay? Bye.